What's going on guys, welcome back to the channel. And uh, today's video will be the fourth and final installment in our building like an idle clicker adventure capitalist type game using Python and Pygame. So if you missed the first three episodes, be sure to go back and check those out. We've already created to where you draw this very colorful board. Each task runs at a different speed and gives you a different amount of money when it's completed. And then in the last video, we drew these buttons on to where you could buy more of each task. And then you also eventually can buy managers. But we haven't set up the code yet to where um, buying those managers or um, buying more of these items does anything yet. So that's what we'll be doing in this video. Um, again, be sure to check out the previous ones if you do want to follow along line for line. But without any further ado, let's get into it. So I'm going to start with the logic for buying the managers because it's actually really straightforward. What we're going to do is we're going to say if the uh, green manager, so we we already when we did the draw buttons, um, we have red manager buy and red buy. And those are the buttons that are going to be um, getting passed back. So we're looking to see if the button green manager buy collides with a mouse click. So we can come right into the code we already built for when you click on the tasks and piggyback off the framework that's there and it'll be if the event position now that was clicked is colliding with the green manager buy button but we need a few additional conditions because there's no reason to um, to let them do anything if they don't have enough money so their score right the money has to be greater than or equal to the green manager cost for the button to do anything and then we'll add another here which is and not green owned so if green is owned already, there's no reason to do this button either. But all we're going to do when it is clicked is two things. We're going to set green owned equal to true because now you had enough money, you clicked on the button and you bought it. And then the other thing we need to do is we need to subtract out the cost of purchasing the manager. So um, now this should handle buying it and this also will probably make the button disappear because we made drawing the button on the screen conditional on it not being owned but what we haven't done yet is we haven't actually said what happens if um, green is owned so let's go ahead and say if green is owned and green draw draw green is false so actually we just say and not draw green so what we're saying here is it hasn't been clicked on but you own the manager and we're gonna set draw green equal to true so another way to think about this draw green we set it we called it draw because it's what's actively drawing the progress bar but it also could be thought of as like a green active variable and so um, what we're saying here is if you own the manager and it's not active set it active so let's go ahead and run this and uh, before I copy this code five times let's just get to a hundred money as fast as we can click them all um, and let's see when I get to a hundred I will try to purchase that green manager button it shouldn't let me do anything none of these buttons are gonna let me do anything yet because I don't have enough money but now we're almost to a hundred I'm gonna buy the manager okay local variable Manager button reference before assignment. Interesting. Screen manager dot buy collide point. So let's take a look at our draw button function because I think it should have let us purchase it there. If not owned, manager button buy. Uh, we need an else condition for this guy. That's my mistake. Um, it needs to exist in all conditions because it's one of the things that we're returning. So the function is going to cancel out. So what we'll do is since the background of the screen is black, um, we'll make it black when uh, when it's already been purchased. So um, just to speed things up so you guys don't have to watch me click around, I'm going to make it to where you start with 90 this time so we can test. So you can see all I did was change the initial money that we start with, but now, okay, I was able to buy the manager. And you can see once it's purchased, um, it goes away. You can click here, nothing happens, and that green task is running automatically on its own. So that's pretty sweet. I'm gonna copy that real quick for the other colors. I'm gonna change the initial score back to zero. 
Um, yeah, obviously it can take a while to test something the first time you write it. So you can do things like adjust your starting score to just give yourself a, an easier time testing. Uh, and as long as you remember to change it out, change it back to what the correct starting conditions are, then that's a really slick trick for troubleshooting a little more rapidly. So now we want that exact code for all six of our tasks, for all six of our five of our colors, red owned. And obviously the cool thing about this is, um, you know, I'm just doing it with generic shapes and colors, but you definitely could substitute in like your own custom icons. Like that's what Adventure Capitalist does. They have like really fun um, little cartoon shapes for each task and they have this like way of scaling it such that you feel like a multi, multi, multi billion trillionaire by the end of the game. And so like, what we're doing here is we're creating a framework where you can customize this game and you can spend all the time you want on the aesthetics, improving it down the line, but you have the shell of the game working really well already for you. So um, hopefully you find this useful. I had a lot of fun the first time I made this game and so I decided to do a series on it. So change everything from green to red. And then let's go ahead and do that again for orange and white and then we'll do purple so I've said this in I think every episode so far every piece of it um, when you do see code like this that has to get essentially copied and just have like one thing replaced each time you definitely could go through and do a for loop um, and find that's basically automating yourself uh, a way of not needing to write the same essential code five times um, for sure you can do that if you want that'd be a little slicker um i am just doing it this way because it's really easy for me to keep like where each thing is if you want to modify like what one button does at a time it can be easy to do it this way but i am spending a lot of time as a consequence of that um, just replacing like the name of one color with the name of another so um, there's definitely value in taking the time to create four loops that'll that'll do this for you five times but that should do it okay so um i'm gonna just i'm not gonna run the test real quick i don't want to chew up too much time and we saw that it worked for the first one so the next thing we're going to do it's going to be very similar to what we just did here we are going to handle what happens if you buy more of a um, specific task so like if you pay the money to buy an additional green um, square you know we want the value to increase and we also want the cost of buying more to increase so let's go ahead and use the same collide point so I'm gonna steal kind of this if task here and I'm gonna say if just green buy so not green manager buy collides with the mouse and the score is greater than just the green cost and now we don't need the and not owned anymore so what we're doing is we're checking to see if you clicked on the buy more green button and that you have enough money to buy it. And if you did, then we're going to do a couple things. We're going to increment the green value. So we'll, we'll do that first. We're going to add some value. And how much should we add? I think because this is the cheapest one, we'll just add 0.15. But then we also need to update the green cost and I'll update it by 0.1 and here's why um, again make these values whatever you want them to be here's why I rounded those values when we drew the buttons on when you give them decimal points Pygame can do this weird thing and Python where it just tax on like instead of 0.15 it'll say 0.1499975 because that's going on in the background of the computer so if you do find yourself with crazy rounding issues, just go through and round it off to a couple decimal points. Um, and then the last thing is you actually have to subtract out the green cost from your money, but you want to do that before you update the green cost. Okay, so let's go ahead and run this and I think this will make it to where you can buy more green. Let's just check that real quick. Okay, so now you can see it's worth 1.15 every time and we can buy a few more and it looks like I actually forgot to round this value when we did our draw task so let's go add that real quick so I can show you what I was talking about uh, draw buttons 
string manager cost draw task yeah so this string value the value was just thrown out some crazy decimal points so let's just round it to two but you could see right there and I've only got the code in for green so far but you could see right there yeah so now we don't get those thankfully we don't get those crazy rounding issues and we can buy more of them and that's really cool like now the green is worth more than the red um, just by running this for a little bit so let's go ahead and copy that for all of them and uh, we'll just play the game a little bit we'll get a few of the managers and this is really when it starts to pay off when you see all of your functionality finally programmed green there we go so then let's make this guy this will be red for everything and the nice part about the way we wrote this code because we made everything a variable um, is we really can just go through and find everywhere that said green and make it red and then um, to make it to where you also like you increase the cost by a progressively larger number but you also pro um, increase the value of each task because you want each task to feel kind of unique and like there's different benefits of getting to different checkpoints um, obviously the like up the the high-end stuff that takes way longer to finish should give you more money and it also makes sense that it would cost more to continue upgrading those so uh, what I have here are just some default values that um, they're not going to be that crazy like it, I'm essentially saying okay well the value is going to be directly proportional to um, the speed as well as the cost so what I'm saying is it's an exact comparison like if, if you buy 10 white it's going to give you more money but it's also slower so it's going to I, I mean it should make sense to you my my main point is if you're designing this game and you want to show it to people and play it with people um, I recommend spending some time to play around with the actual like gameplay and change some values change some speeds add some code for like oh you get above a thousand and then this happens or this happens um, but I'm trying to help you guys build the framework of the game so these, these are some default values I found were, were pretty fun in creating it initially and running through it. So let's go ahead and see now. Um, first thing I do every time I play this game is I try to get myself a manager like as fast as possible, even before buying more of any product, because I hate clicking around um, on all five tasks. It's really time consuming. So I try to get to 100 as fast as possible using all the tasks. Yeah, let's see, get ourselves a green manager, upgrade green a little bit more because you can tell like with how much now we get per execution of green, it's really worth it to upgrade them a little bit. Let's see if we can get it up to like, yeah, we'll get them above six. And now we'll run the other ones a little bit. And do, 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 do. I'll probably chop this up in the video a little bit to just highlight the different cool things going down um, but yeah if you stuck with it this whole tutorial and you built this game start to finish with me I really appreciate you being here uh, I try to get a lot of these tutorials out every week and I take a lot of requests so if there's something specific that you want to see rebuilt in Python or Pygame or you have any other questions about just software in general and writing programming just let me know about in the comments and I'll be sure to get back to you as soon as I can um, but hopefully you've enjoyed this series. If you did, definitely be sure to uh, subscribe to the channel and be on the lookout for more fun content. And uh, definitely I appreciate you being here and watching all these videos. And yeah, let me know if you decide to build this game and you add on to it and you add other features, what you do differently. Because um, it's always fun to see like how someone can take the framework of a project and really expand it out to make it their own. There's obviously a million different things you could do with this game, um, you know, to really to take it to the next level. But uh, I think this is pretty fun, pretty cool to look at. Um, you know, I, I bought the second manager there now and I'm only doing half the work and uh, they're making quite a bit more than me clicking these three. So let's see, I'll just play around for a bit longer. Do, do, do. 
And I will say this is actually fairly addictive, uh, especially like if you're doing something on your other screen, like you're writing emails or something, you leave this up on the left screen and let yourself get a whole bunch of money while you're not looking and then buy a obscene number of upgrades once you come back with thousands of dollars. It's really, <laughs> it is addictive, which is definitely kind of the sense I got from it the first time I played it. Uh, you know, like the app Adventure Capitalist on my phone where you just spend hours a day and you don't even realize it, um, upgrading it. And the, some fun things you could do with this game, you could make it to where the costs of upgrading are actually way higher, but then when you hit certain checkpoints, like everything multiplies times two, like achievements, that's sort of the standard style of this game is like if you get everything times 10 then then you get a multiplier where the speed of everything doubles like the the possibilities of things you could add on are endless so um i enjoyed making this a lot i hope you enjoyed uh watching this series of videos and following along if you did um as always i appreciate you checking out the channel be sure to leave a like and a subscribe if you found it useful and if you want to see anything specific in the future just let me know about in the comments below and i will try to get back to you as soon as i can and as always good luck with your code and thanks for watching thanks guys bye